Welcome to the Rock Church Riverside, taking the Word of God to Riverside and around the world. Let's prepare our hearts now for another dynamic message from the Word of God. How are we doing tonight, Rock Church? Are you ready to worship God tonight? Is God good? Hallelujah! Come on, put our hands together, come on. Come on, sing with us. All sufficient, rich in mercy, you have given, given freely, with intentions, you've designed me. Your forgiveness never ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, sing it again. Come on. All sufficient, rich in mercy. Hallelujah. 
I'm thankful that he reigns forever in our life. Amen. Oh, there's no other name with the name of Jesus. We can say that name, Jesus, Jesus. There's no other name, no other language. It's, it's all the same, Jesus. Amen. Come on, sing it out. And you are good, you are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love, you are love. On display for all to see You are light, you are light When the darkness closes in You are hope, you are hope You have covered all my sin Come on, say you are peace You are peace you are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in the little lost in
say it in, you can say it in Spanish, you can say it in English, you can say it in any language, and it all is the same, Jesus, amen? Come on, let's all sing it again, come on. My heart will sing, no other name, Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. Let's sing it in Spanish. Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing. No other name. Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing. Come on, sing it out. No other name. Sing Jesus, Jesus. of God. How many of you feel it right in here? <laughs> you know, when you're under when you're under that cloud, that presence of God. You know, I don't I don't ever want to just feel it here. I always want to feel it when I go home. I want to feel it on Monday. I want to feel it on Tuesday. <laughs> I don't just want to feel it on Wednesday at church or on Sunday morning. I want to feel it when I'm driving on that 91. Amen. <laughs> I want to feel that presence of God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, sing, who is like you, Lord? And who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? That's his love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world can satisfy. You're the cloud that won't run dry. See your presence. Your presence is filled. See your presence. Your presence is filled. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Treasure of my past and present world. You're the holder of my future days to come. Sing your praise. Oh, 
comes up your presence is heaven to me amen oh we praise you jesus you are worthy to be praised amen i tell you man we could sing all night hallelujah you know i, I want to encourage you you know during worship you know we we put carpet up here not to make it look nice we we want we want carpet that we want people to be able to just come up and kneel at the altar during worship time at any time you want to do that our ushers aren't going to jump on you and beat you up don't worry 
Amen. You can just come right up here, kneel down, and just cry out to the Lord. Amen. Get some stuff off of you. Amen. And just cast your cares on the one who cares for you. Amen. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we are so thankful that you come tonight to the Rock Church Riverside. You could be in a million different places, but we're so glad that you're here today. A lot of uh, familiar faces and a lot of new faces we see tonight. And we want to welcome you to see what God's doing because I believe it's not about a building. It's not about building a big ministry or a big church. It's about touching lives for Jesus and adding to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, listen, we are so thankful that you're here. We want to say welcome. And uh, uh, my name is Tom. My wife, Heather, and I are the senior pastors here at the Rock Church. And this is just a, a wonderful thing that's going on here. You know, we have only been here for three years, a little over three years. We started with 12 people, and God has just done an amazing thing here in Riverside. Seeing lives touched for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And, you know, if it is your first time, we want to give you a great big rock welcome amen you know I, I i just noticed something we clap a lot in this church hallelujah amen this is a happy church amen and it's okay to be loud amen how many know it's going to be loud in heaven amen there's gonna be a lot of shouting going on in heaven amen it's going to be exciting. Well, if it is your first time, we want to let you know our motto here. It says we are. Uh, uh, it says it right there on the screen. It's loving people to life. Amen. Now, we love you to life. We don't judge you. We don't point fingers at you. We just love you to life, and we love you through the eyes of Jesus. Amen. Now, listen, I'm not a, I'm not a love boat captain. Amen. I mean, I'm going to preach the truth to you, and sometimes the truth is going to shake you a little bit because it's the truth that's going to make you free. Amen. And so we're going to preach the truth, but we want to let you know that God loves you. God cares about you. God has an amazing life in front of you. And uh, so we just want to let you know that. And that's what we're all about. And uh, so I want to let you know that right in front of your seat is a first-time visitor card. At any time during the service, you just want to reach out, grab one of those in front of your seat. If there isn't one, raise your hand. Our wonderful ushers will hand you one. And uh, you just fill out the information. Let us know who you are. And uh, we're not going to bug you. We just want to pray for you. There's a good place on the bottom that says uh, uh, prayer requests. Amen. Now you, we want to encourage you to fill out that prayer request because my wife, Heather and I, we get together with a whole prayer team and we pray over those prayer cards every single week when we get them. Amen. And we're not just going to pray for you. You have enough people praying for you. We're going to believe God for you. Amen. And so I want to let you know that those cards are right in front of you. Grab one of those cards and before you have a seat, go ahead and greet someone you didn't come with and say hello to them. Amen. Amen. Well, we are so thankful that you're here today. Open it and just loosen it at the bottom. Amen. Well, we're going to have a great time tonight. Amen. Now, I want to let you know that we're just going to have a, a, a wonderful time, and we don't want to have any interruptions during the service. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do this uh, 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 regular stuff. Is uh, At the end of the service, we usually take tithes and offerings, but we don't want to interrupt the, the preaching of the gospel today, especially with a, uh, a special guest here. Uh, so why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and bring the Lord his tithes and our offerings unto the Lord? Amen. Come on, let's give him a praise for that. Amen. Amen. If you're giving my check, make it out to the Rock Church Riverside cash or credit card. There's envelopes in front of your seat. Go ahead and grab one of those and fill it out. And uh, I just want to let you know that uh, um, if did anybody see the little giving kiosk out front? Now, if you're not a computer geek, you know, it might be a little kind of weird, strange doing that. But, you know, we want to let you know that there's a couple of things why we did that. Uh, one, because, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little convenient for people. Uh, another reason why we do that is because we, we spend a lot of money on printing for uh, envelopes, and this will help cut down on printing costs, and it will help with, uh, with uh, you know, the trees. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> 
So we're not using so much paper, amen? Because once they, the people that, uh, you know, take the offering and they count the offering, they shred all that paper, you know, and, it's just, uh, and it just goes to waste. So this is going to help with that. And so we want to let you know that that's available for you. Once you log in and you put in your information, it's pretty simple once you get used to it. And if you go online uh, and you click on the giving tab, the, the, the screen is exactly what's on the kiosk. So you kind of get uh, familiar with it that way, amen? Amen. Well, let me go ahead and pray over your offering tonight. Father, we thank you for this offering. We ask your blessing on it. We ask that you use it for the furtherance of the gospel, that souls be saved and lives be changed, Father. We ask God as we give tonight, we give out of our heart, God, because you said in your word that you love a cheerful giver. Now, Lord, we don't give to expect from you because we know you're a good God and we got salvation. There's more, nothing else than, there's nothing else we want than that. But Lord, we know that you are a good God and you said in your word that if you, we bring our tithes and offerings to the storehouse that you'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. So we come with that faith, believing that you'll take care of all of our needs because you are Jehovah Jireh. And Lord, we thank you for that. We ask for your blessing on this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and pass the offering bucket. And uh, why don't you go ahead and watch the screens uh, for the announcements for this week, amen. t-shirts are available today for purchase for only ten dollars they are available in pink purple and black what a great way to share with others about your church you've been asking for it so we're bringing it to the rock church that's right zumba fitness with certified instructor nicole forbes classes will be held tuesday nights from 6 30 to 8 p.m starting march 4th are you ready for your next step in growing deeper with god jesus said believe and be baptized water baptism will be sunday march 2nd during our 5 p.m service Register today at the Guest Relations Counter. This Wednesday, February 26, we are excited to welcome Zenya and Vera Kasevich, powerful ministers of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We must have, oh my gosh, attitude in our lives. I'm talking about spirit of appreciation in every sphere of our life. As the senior pastors of Hillsong Church Ukraine, their ministry has had great impact in Central Europe and around the world. Come and be blessed by a powerful message from God. Food is available for purchase today outside following no, each service today. brought to you that's, by Family Sunday. Funnel Cakes. <laughs> funnel Cakes, blooming onions, nachos, curly fries, pretzels, coffee, tea, and more. Homeless Ministry Outreach is this Monday, February 24th. There will be a meeting today if you would like to be a part at 4 p.m. in our Children's Ministry Building. For more information, see our information table in the foyer. Okay, men, next Saturday, March 1st, is Men's Breakfast. Come out and enjoy food, fellowship, and the word. This is a free event, so bring a friend as iron sharpens iron. Amen. Well, as you know, it's a lot of work putting those videos together, so it's really hard to uh, add everything for the whole week and then make a whole different one for Wednesday, so I'm sure you can appreciate that uh, some of those things have already been taking place. We don't have funnel cakes today. I know you all came for the funnel cakes. I apologize, but uh, honey, can you go to the donut shop after and get some uh, sh sugar? I like the sugar donuts, amen. All right. Well, listen, we're going to have a great time tonight. Now, last uh, Sunday, we uh, uh, on the video announcements, we showed, uh, uh, we told you that uh, Zenia and, and Vera were going to be coming and ministering. Well, uh, we had a, 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 a little situation. The Lord has totally blessed us. Yes. Hallelujah. The prettier half is coming. Amen. <laughs> because uh, 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 Zenia, they went to Florida on the way back. He fell asleep on the plane and uh, the air got to his throat and he lost his voice. And so as he, uh, he preached for Bayless Conley and he preached for half the messages and then he uh, uh, couldn't do it anymore. So his wife Vera preached the rest of the messages and she went to the Spanish to preach for the Spanish and they came up and said, we're glad you sent Vera. So, amen. So, you know, tonight we're going to have a great time because I believe the person that's supposed to be here is here tonight. Amen? That the Lord knows what he's doing. And I believe our sister Vera has come to preach a word to you that's going to minister, going to touch your life, going to just do a mighty thing. And how many know we don't come to hear from a man or a woman? We come to hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 
So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this service. We ask your blessing on it. We thank you, Lord, as you minister through Sister Vera, God, as she brings a, a word, a, a word that's due, a due season word, God, for us so that we can be all that you've called us to be and do what you've called to, us to do. And, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name for your anointing, the Holy Spirit and the anointing that breaks every yoke. And, Father, we thank you for your goodness in her life as she brings forth the word in Jesus name amen sister Vera would you come and minister the word come on let's give Jesus a praise for Vera Kasovich amen thank you so much thank you pastor Tom and thank you church I'm so glad to be here tonight I hope you would understand my English and yes you got the better half believe me and uh, my husband uh, you know what two of us we are one flesh and we are ministering together uh, for 22 years and our church in kiev and in moscow and by the way do you understand kiev is the capital of ukraine and moscow is the capital of russia it's two different countries and these days actually you can pastor churches in different countries so my husband and I, we planned church in Kiev, in Moscow, and then Tel Aviv, Israel, and Warsaw, Poland. And you can actually pastor four churches in four different nations. Why not? Yes, God provide us with uh, plane tickets so we can fly. And you know, because we are pastoring many churches, four, I think it's many, it's a lot for, for two people to pastor. Sometimes we share the same message, he fly to one city, I fly to another city. And because we are doing this together, we can reach more people for Jesus. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are here already during worship. God, your presence was obvious. And God, your presence is heaven to us. We ask you, Holy Spirit, speak to us, encourage us, enlarge our heart, build our faith, minister to us. We are asking, please, speak through me, God. Speak through my heart, through my lips, through my mind. And do your amazing, miraculous work here tonight. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I need to introduce myself properly. My name is Vera. And this is a Russian name. But as I understand, lots of uh, Spanish people, they got the same name, Vera. So you are not stranger to this. But in Russian language, Vera means faith. Faith. Not face. I just need to correct my pronunciation, because sometimes when I speak English, I need interpreter to translate for everything I said. But I'm very grateful I got this chance to uh, preach here in this church because I'm grateful to you. You sent your pastor to Ukraine uh, a couple of years ago to our women's conference in Kiev, and we were very blessed to have her. So I'm just paying you back. It's a payback. <laughs> And tonight I'm going to preach about a very important subject, which God, God, you know, I'm not preaching from, uh, I'm, I'm not preaching from my mind. I'm always preaching from my heart. And most of the time when God is dealing with my heart and God is leading me through the valley of life or God is leading me through the victories, I'm always preach from my experience because I believe if God doing something in your life, God doing this for, the, for his purposes. And we need to share with people, not just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, but our own testimonies. Do you know I do have a testimony? 22 years ago, I was a girl from Soviet Union. I, half of my life I lived under the Soviet Union regime and... Uh, I never heard about Jesus. I never heard about church. In my city, we do have cathedrals, Orthodox cathedrals, with, which stay there for more than 1,000 years. But I never heard about Jesus. And in fact, in my school, it was a subject called atheism. And they told us there is no God. And you know, it's, it was not my fault I grew up like this. Because... When you are a baby and you are growing in certain circumstances, you believe what they told you to believe. But when Soviet Union collapsed 22 years ago and communism fell, thank you so much for your prayers. Because I believe prayers works. 
And because of that, lots of missionaries and pastors and teachers started to come to our country and they brought us the message that God is alive, that Jesus can save. I never heard about this. So I remember I opened my heart and I got saved 22 years ago and my life changed completely. Back then, I could not speak any English. I knew just four or five words, mother, father, sister, brother, and coca <laughs> That was my vocabulary. But because I was so hungry for the word of God, and you know, in our land, for 70 years of communism, lots of pastors and teachers of the world, they were sent to Siberia, or they were forced to immigrate to other countries. So we did not have many books or tapes, or it, it was tapes back then, uh, or any kind of resources to uh, teach us about God and about Christianity. So I remember I was listening to all of those preachers and teachers from uh, America or Europe or Australia who would teach about Jesus. I would read books English books with dictionary. That's how I learn English. So if I say something wrong, just blame all of those missionaries and pastors and teachers because I learned from them. You see, but I never knew God can use me. I could not speak English. I did not know anything about the word of God, but I fell in love with Jesus because he saved me. And I do have my testimony and my life story. I don't have time to tell the story tonight, because most of the time when I travel, I share this story with women at the women's conferences, and they all cry. I don't know why, my, when my husband preach, everyone laugh. When I speak, everyone cry. But I hope, yeah, I can see you are laughing. It's good. It's a good sign. But I will tell a little bit of my story during my message, okay? My message called tonight, Heart Inside Out. Heart, Heart Inside Out. You see, I'm a very organized person. And wherever I travel, people smile because I, I speak good about myself. I'm saying good stuff about myself because I have a good self-esteem. You see, 22 years ago, I did not believe I was created by the image of God. When I was 11 years of age, my parents divorced. My dad spent most of his life in prison. And my mom remarried for the third time. My stepfather was very abusive, and he was beating me and my sister. And when I asked my mom to protect me, my mom said to me, you know, I choose my husband number three instead of you. She said, you will grow up, you will have your chance to get married, but I don't want to be alone. You know, I was 11, I could not understand. And I could not understand why this happened. And, and in my heart, I created this hate toward my own mother. Since I was 11, I was living without parents. I was living by myself. And I wanted to protect my heart. I did not want to become a victim. You know, in my school and in my neighborhood, people will tell, oh, look at this girl. She's from a bad family. So I wanted to prove I'm not from a bad family. I tried to study as hard as I can. I tried to be organized. But you know what? People are cruel. And especially people without God, they are cruel. They point fingers, they call you names. So I just decided, you know, I would move out from my city. When I was 14 and 15, I moved out to another city where people did not know me. So when people would ask me about my family and about my mom and dad, I would say, I don't have parents that are dead. It was easier for me to say they're dead than to explain about my family situation because you don't want people to say, oh, poor you. So you see, in my heart, before I met Jesus, I already created this defense system and my heart become hard as stone. I did not want to feel anything. I decided and even 11 and 12 year old person could decide. I decided no one can hurt me because I protected my heart. When people would ask me about my mom, I would say she is dead. And yes, I was lying, but I was telling the truth because in my heart, she was dead. It was a cemetery in my heart. You see, 
I was 22. And I came to church. And I got saved. And I was so in love with Jesus because I read in the Bible, Jesus said, even if your own mother would forsake you, I would never forsake you. So I believe, I believe he loves me unconditionally. That's why I wanted to do anything for him. So I started to volunteer in church. I did everything. I was doing children's ministry. I, went, I was cleaning dishes. I was, uh, I was uh, when I was asked to lead worship, I was leading worship because I'm a professional musician. I'm a violinist. And my husband, we got highest education in music. So everything in church, I did everything. I did ushering. I did, I did chairs. I served my pastor. I cooked for him with my husband. We did groceries. You know, we did everything in church. Because we wanted to, to show our gratitude to our Lord Jesus Christ who saved us and accepted us into his family. And I remember four years after being saved, God called my husband and I to be the pastors of the same church. And I, I remember I, I, I was freaked out because I said, God, I cannot, I cannot pastor this church with my husband because we did not even read the whole, whole Bible yet. What if people would ask me about the book of Esther? I don't have a clue where this book is. You see, we were newly Christians. We love God. And, but, and we were ministering and serving in church, and maybe that's why God chose us to be pastors, because we knew everything about church. We could do anything. But I was, to be honest, I was scared. Not about, about I did not know Bible. I was scared because, which means, if I would be a pastor with my husband, I need to pastor women in our church. But in my heart, it was huge unforgiveness toward my mom. And even people in, your, in my church, they did not know. I lied to them about my mother. So I realized, actually, I cannot pastor people without being transparent and honest. So what I did, I, I remember being a newly pastor. I was 26. And I gather women in our church, some older women as well. And I confess, I said, I need to say the truth. I cannot pastor you unless I will be open to you. And I said, I do have a mother, but she abandoned me when I was 11. You know, I did not know what reaction would be because I was vulnerable. But people, especially women in church, they were so nice. And they said to me, you know, we would pray with you and for you. So you would forgive your mother and you would uh, have a chance to see her one day because, you know, so many years pass. Soviet Union collapsed, and now I live in Ukraine, and my mom lives somewhere in Russia, and we completely lost connections. I don't know where she is. She don't know where I am. So I started to pray about forgiveness, and God started to work in my heart. You see, I'm a very organized person. I tried to put everything in order, but being organized, I could not organize my heart because only God could heal your heart. It's not in my power. You see, in some sense, I'm organized, but in some sense, I'm not organized. And you can ask me, how could it be? You know, people who are very organized, they focus on something, but they neglect something. Do you know some of the famous people, I mean, most genius people, they were strange. If you would remember the picture of Albert Einstein, he, was, he is genius, but he looks strange to me. And actually, when I started to read, read about his life, for example, he did lots of strange things. And he, for example, he never used, he never used socks. I know these days it's kind of fashionable, but back then it was strange. If you would... I love art, and my favorite artist would be Michelangelo. And I love art, but you know, Michelangelo, as genius as he is, he never washed himself. Who? Yeah. Tell me about it. By the way, do you understand my English? Oh, good. Because you know what? My native language is Ukrainian. Because I grew up in Soviet Union, I'm thinking in Russian, and I'm pre uh, preaching in English, and I'm praying in tongues. So it's, and I'm translating in my head. 
So you see, genius people, there is a fact, genius people are people who organize unbelievable things and put them in order to make revolutionary invention in science or art or music. The same people were so unorganized in some other things in life. They just ignore those things because it was not important to them. It was not their concern. You see, I was very organized. I was focusing on building church, serving in church, but I was completely, completely neglecting my heart. And when God called me with my husband to pastor a church, God showed me, you are not able to pastor a church with your intelligence and with your knowledge of Bible. You need to pastor your church from heart to heart. I was in church for four years. I was trying to be grateful to God, and God said to me, you know what, I don't need your work as much as I need your heart. Someone famous said once, everyone is ignorant just on a different subject. When I'm focusing on something, like Sunday morning, I'm so organized. But my husband always needs to check the way I dress because I always put something inside out. Some clothes would be inside out. Did it, is it happen to you sometimes? You are so focused on something, you are neglecting something. When you are focusing on something, then something would be definitely neglected. Sometimes something is going to be out of your attention because it is secondary. Could it be? I got a question for all of us tonight. Could it be that sometimes we are focusing on something which is not important to God and we are neglecting something what is important to God? It's interesting to me that some of the words in the Bible, anyway, in my Russian Bible, particular wo words in God's scripture I use more than others. It's like God points my attention and our attention to it. For example, one of the words like this I found in the Bible, heart. Not a physical organ, but heart as a spiritual organ, our soul. More than 1,000 times, more than 1,000 times, God used this word in this meaning in the Bible, spiritual heart. And you know, I realized when I became pastor, I realized... Actually, I'm focusing on everything in church, but I'm neglecting the most important thing which God concerned, my heart. Psalm 33, verses 13, 15, it says, the Lord watches from heaven. Can you imagine God? He watches from heaven. It says in the Bible, he watches from heaven and he sees all people. He can see you, he can see me. From the place where he lives, he looks carefully at all the earth's inhabitants. He is the one who forms every human heart and takes note of all their actions. You see, in my Russian Bible, and I believe in your English Bible, it's the same. God is looking from heaven, not just on your actions. God is looking from heaven how your heart is doing and how your heart influences your action. Sometimes we are too, as Christians, I know I'm a woman, we could be too paranoid. God, what do you want me to do? Can I do this? Can I go there? Could I date this girl? Could I marry this man? Should I take this job? You know, we are asking questions, God, what is your will? But you know, God is allowed us to choose what we want. But we need to ask the right question. If I choose something, if I do something, how this would influence my heart? That's a main question. Because if your heart would be corrupted, if your choice or your action would take you away from God, maybe it's not will of God. God watches from heaven carefully, carefully. He look at your heart. He look at my heart. So you see, God was not impressed by my service to him. He said, I got everything. He loves when we serve him. But when we serve him, but our heart is not healed. Our heart is not right. You know, for God, our service and our ministry is still secondary. 
because he watches from, from heaven, not how we serve him, but how our hearts are doing. Are you okay? Are you with me? That's why Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart with all diligence for, from it as a sources of life. There are situations in our life which God allowed to happen. There are situations in our life when God wants to turn our heart from inside out so it could be evident to him and to us what's in there. Normally, I don't preach with points. That's why my husband called me hopeless preacher. <laughs> yeah, we encourage each other this way. <laughs> you know, back in Russia, we, we, we just say it straight. <laughs> there is no tact in our family. <laughs> But we love each other. We can do this. I don't recommend you to do this unless you love and trust each other. But he, when he preached, he used points and he used jokes. And because I'm, like, I'm a woman, I can talk for hours without any point and people understand my point. <laughs> but tonight, I will be an excellent preacher because I will use three points, okay? Okay. But before I use these points, I want to read Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. In the Message Bible, it says, God knows everything inside and out. You know, he knows everything. I did not even know what's in my heart. I didn't have a clue. So when I, when I started to pray about my mom, God told me to write a book. To write a book about like my testimony do you know it took me so many years to write a book because some of the chapters i could stop and i couldn't move forward i was stuck i thought i'm free i'm in church for five years now i'm at every service now i'm a pastor of the church i should be free you know prayer of salvation saves us but healing sometimes takes time god could heal instantly but sometimes it takes time. That's what I learned during these 22 years. I wanted instant change of my heart, but it did not happen this way. And I remember I was struggling even with my husband, with my children. By the way, I got two children. One of them is 26 and another is 20. And I'm a grandma expecting a third grandchild. Yes, and you would say, oh my God, how old are you? 26. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were too young. Uh, my husband was three and I was two. <laughs> but because I grew up without family, I, I, was, I was longing to have a family. So I got married very early. We got children straight away. Because I thought if I would just have family, this would fix everything. You know, I lost family when I was 11. And I was thinking when I will have family, I will have children, child, as, as soon as possible. It will fix everything. You know, it did not. I did not even know how to love my own daughter because my heart did not know how to have relationship between mother and daughter. And I can tell you right now, my daughter now is 20. She's my best friend. I'm her best friend. But without God's healing, it would not be possible. God knows everything inside and out. So I thought God called me to be a pastor to minister to other people. But actually God called me to be a pastor to heal me. I was forced to go through healing process. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to minister to other women. So your beautiful wife, Heza, she came to Kiev and she saw many women in the women's conference. But this would never happen if I would not allow God to heal me and to restore my relationship with my own mother after 20 years of separation. Okay, my point number one, you see? It's too long. God takes note of your actions only because of your heart. Sometimes we focus on actions. Should I do this? Should I do that? But we need to focus at our heart. And then it would be easier for us to choose our actions. God is not interested in your deeds as much as at your heart. So we need to ask God, God, how this action will influence my heart? On my relationship with you. Do you remember the story about Abraham? By the way, where, where is this? Where, where is this countdown? I cannot see this clock. Help me, 
is it there? No, forever. Till morning. <laughs> Abraham and Isaac. Do you remember the story, Genesis chapter 22, when God asked Abraham to give his only child as a sacrifice? Do you remember the story? And you know, as a, I was a newly Christian, I could not figure out God. I'm trying to be logical. And I said, God, what's the point? You promised this Isaac to Abraham. God, you know through Isaac, Isaac, all your promises would be fulfilled. God, there is no point to kill this boy because you know you will resurrect this boy even if he would be dead. So what's the point? God knew that Isaac should be alive. God knew, but Abraham did not. So you see, it says in, in the Bible, when Abraham already sacrificed Isaac in his heart, that's when God said, stop it. It's enough. Sometimes God just needs to know what's in our heart. So all of this story and all of this spiritual surgery, as I call it, was needed just to reveal what's in Abraham's heart, to turn it inside out. Psalm 26, verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reign and my heart. What situation could try your heart? What circumstances could turn your heart inside out? You know, you probably saw the news. The last week was deadliest week ever for Ukraine. And you know, my heart, if you follow, I don't think you follow me on Instagram, but people who follow me on Instagram, they would see I post I post like picture after picture, message after message, saying like my heart just breaking. Over more than 100 people killed. You know, my, my, own, my, my husband, mother, she was standing there among protesters. And good news is the corruptive government is out. The bad president who killed his own people out. It's all good. Two days ago it's happened. But six days ago it was blood in the center of my city. Do you know how many people would cry? They did not know what outcome would be because it's this bad, corruptive president was ready to use army against their own, his own people. Sometimes situation happen to show us what's in our heart. And I remember I was posting, I know I needed to cry with my own people, but I was posting this, you know? No matter what's happened, yes, we cry, but still through our tears, we can keep our faith. We can stay strong and believe God is above all. So what situation could try your heart? What can melt down your heart? Psalm 17, 17 verse 3. You have scrutinized my inner motives. You have examined me during the night. You have carefully evaluated me during the night. You know, night, it's the darkest moment of your life. And all of us, we've got our darkest moment. You know, in my Christian life, I got darkest moment. And in this moment, they are darkest. They are most difficult, but they are more blessed than others because I could see my heart. When God was dealing with my heart, and I wrote a book about it. It takes me three years to write this book. It was not easy. So sometimes people are thinking, we as Christians to write the books to make money, it's not. If I would like to make money, I would do something else like real estate or some other stuff. The reason we as pastors do these resources and we are preparing these messages to help people, to help people. It was a surgery on my heart. 20 years after my separation with my mom. Actually, I met my mom. You know, I forgive her. I was completely free. So now I'm doing these women's conferences. I'm traveling the world. I'm preaching everywhere. And it was so easy to forgive my virtual mother because I didn't know where she is. And then one day, I turned 30. And I got a phone call from my brother, and he said, Vera, you know, our mother came to Ukraine and she wants to see you. You know, 20 years ago, I saw her for the last time. I never heard about her, no postcard, nothing. And it was easy to for forgive person <laughs> until you need to see this person face to face. 
That was a real surgery. When I saw my mom, when I saw my mom, I remember my husband and two of my kids, we drive to my hometown and she came to my hometown from Russia. And I remember I knocked to the door uh, and she opened the door. I could not recognize her because she was old. She lost most of her tears. She lives in far Siberia. Her husband number three left her. With him, she got two more children. I never have seen my stepbrother and stepsister. When she opened the door, she could not recognize me. But my son at that stage, he was 12. And she turned to my son straight away and she said, you look like my daughter. Probably she did not even know what to say to me. She could not even say hello or something. And you know, I was the first one to say. And I did not even say hi. I said, mama, forgive me, please. As the first sentence I said. And she was in shock and she said, why are you asking for forgiveness? I left you, I abandoned you, I'm such a bad person. I said, no, 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 I'm asking you to forgive me because I hated you for so long. And that's what kept you in bondage. And I remember we came to this little room and you know, Holy Spirit is amazing. Somehow Holy Spirit lifted the roof and we started to talk about children and life. Like nothing happened. And then I boldly asked my mother to pray the prayer of salvation. And you need to understand, my mom, she was a communist all her life. And she said, of course I will pray. And I was like, oh, hold on a second. It took me two months <laughs> to pray the prayer of salvation because I was trying to figure it out in my mind. And you are easily agreeing to pray. And she said, it's not a problem for me to believe in God because who could raise you like this without parents if there is no God? <laughs> you see, I would not be... A so my mom is saved. My, my dad, she ca he came from prison. He is saved. All my family is saved. In, my, in, my, in our church, we got four generations of Kasevich family. And you know, it would not happen if I would not allowed God to heal my heart. Matthew 10, 28 says, don't be afraid who are after your bodies, but be afraid of those who can corrupt and kill your heart. Matthew 18, 9 says, it's better to lose your leg or hand or eyes than to lose your heart or your soul. You know, I'm not, I hate to say this, but Bible is saying this. It's better for us to be dead than to lose our heart. Because for God, our heart are his priority. It says in Psalm 95:10, God is saying, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. You know, because of their heart, people were going through the desert. They were wandering for 40 years in wilderness only because of their heart. Often we stay in a desert longer than we should just because of condition of our heart. So you see, for five years I was in church. I was leading even worship. I was serving in church, but I did not allow God to heal my heart because I did not pay attention to it. It was not my concern. I love cartoons and one of my favorite cartoons, Shrek. I love this character. I just love him. And you rem remember the moment when Donkey, Donkey, he is like, I love Donkey. You can, you, <laughs> nothing you can do to make him sad. He's happy. He's just happy. You cannot even offend him. But that was one moment when Donkey said to Shrek, you cut me deep. You cut me real deep right now. <laughs> do you remember this moment? So my question for us tonight, what can cut you deep? And you, you would say, oh, God is cruel. He wants to cut me deep. No, no, no. He's cutting you deep to heal you. My point number two, God can turn your heart inside out only when he touches what's precious and valuable to you. Sometimes bad things happen to us, but when we are with God, we need to understand, God can turn situation for our good if we understand we are going through this valley only because of our heart. You remember the story, I don't have time to read, but story about Job. That guy was perfect. Compared to me, he was perfect. It says in the Bible he was righteous, but for me it's almost perfect. Okay? 
And everything what's happened to him, devil came to God and said, oh, of, course, of course he is good, but because you bless him, take everything. And you remember these words, it says in the Bible, God said, you can take everything, but don't touch his heart. Even if I would lose everything, I still got my heart protected. And this is the most important thing. And because of Job's attitude, he got everything back even twice, more than it he lost. If you read the story about King Solomon and two mothers, First King chapter 3, 26, it's a story about two mothers and uh, one baby. There is a problem, okay? It says in the Bible, Solomon was wisest person on earth. He was the wisest judge, wisest king. Can you imagine today, if you would come to the court, two mothers with one baby, and judge would say to you, cut the baby in half. You would not say he is wise. But Solomon did not want to cut the baby. Solomon wanted to cut mother's heart. He wanted to cut mother's heart real deep. And it says in the Bible, the real mother spoke up to the king for her motherly instinct. And in my Russian translation, it translated, her mother's heart were aroused. She said, my master, give her the living child. Whatever you do, don't kill him. But the other woman said, neither one of us will have him. Let them cut him in two. And Solomon said, now I can see the heart of the real mother. You see, he did not want to cut the baby. He just needed to turn mother's heart inside out. So sometimes situations like this happen. And science and medicine can go deep now. But still there is no methods how to go deep into human soul. So what kind of test could turn your heart inside out? And sometimes we are going through these steps, tests. We don't need to make it up. It's happened. In my, okay, in my life, it's happened all the time. For example, every week, it's happened when pastor asks us to, go, to give tithes and offering. You would say, oh, it's easy. No, I don't. it's not easy. It's not easy when you don't have money to pay your bills and you still need to tithe and you need, still need to give offering. It's like a little cut. No one knows about it, only you and God. So actually, God doesn't need our money. But for me, you know, I grew up in the Soviet Union. I didn't have a clue why do I need to tithe? Why do I need to give offerings? But for, for me, God shows this revelation. I needed to do this for the sake of my heart. This is a little surgery. God says it's better for you to give. What do you mean better? My logic would say to me, how this, how this could be better for me uh, if I got less than I used to have. <laughs> and yeah, I, this is just my communist mindset, okay? Sorry. I know here in America, you all Christians, you don't think that way. Only me. <laughs> and God is saying, it's better for your heart and for your heart to be healthy, to give. So you can ch check there is no, there is a trust. There is a faith. My last point God knows the secrets of your heart, but he wants to reveal them for kingdom purposes. Sometimes we as human beings, we genuinely don't know what's inside of us. And we don't have a clue what in other people's heart. And then situation happens and God allows this to happen. And we see the person, how this person reacts. And we say, oh yeah. And you promise love me forever and ever and ever. And now I offend you. And you cannot even forgive me. Do you know in church people are saying, oh, I don't like to go to church because people, uh, like people offend me or people, you know what? In church, God allows us to show us our heart. Do we have enough mercy for these people? Do we have enough grace or forgiveness to these people? Because sometimes people do this and God allowed them to do this toward us. To show us our heart. The most precious for God in us, our heart. But often people, they neglect their own heart. 
they pay more attention at some things which are not that important to God. And in the end of my message, I just want to share with you. As you can understand, because I came from communistic society, when I read my Bible, I did not believe straight away. I need to question everything. I remember I was questioning the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Because I could not understand. I'm a mother myself. I could not understand, God, why did you need to kill Jesus? Why did you need to kill your own son to, to save me? It's cruel. There is no logic in it. And I remember I was praying. You know, it's a difficult question to ask. And we should ask God in our prayer life, in our relationship with him. We need to ask him these questions. He's a good God. In the book of James, it said, just ask him for wisdom. He will reveal to you. So I'm not claiming this theologically correct, but that was my revelation about the cross. When God put Jesus on the cross, he did not really put Jesus on the cross. He put himself on the cross. He turned his heart inside out so we could see he loves us. As a sacrificial love. Don't be ignorant about your heart. When I go through this healing process, after that I've got many situations. In fact, right now I'm in a situation where God is showing me my heart. Plenty of situation to be angry, to be offended, to be unforgiving. Plenty of situation to lose your faith in God. But you know what? Because I learned my lesson back then. Now being a grandma, I understand. When you do your first exam, it's easy to do second exam. When you can see a good result of the third exam, it's easy to do sixth exam. If you understand what I mean. And I'm going to pray right now for our hearts. And hopefully after this message, all of us would say, thank you, Jesus, for everything was going around me, good or bad, you can use this for my benefit if my heart would be in the right position. Dear Holy Spirit, I'm just so grateful for your presence here. You teach us, you challenge us, you comfort us. You build faith inside of our hearts. And I'm praying right now for everyone in this auditorium. And I'm, I ask the Holy Spirit, do your miraculous work right now. Let your healing happen. Start your healing process in every situation, in every human heart. Because I know, God, you are perfect healer. Only you can go deep inside of us. You look from heaven. And you can do everything we need when we trust you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Wonderful, wonderful word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us all bow our heads and close our eyes once again. Perhaps you're here today. We never like to end a message without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Sister Vera ministered a word that touch, can touch all of our hearts no matter where we are. And we can identify with many of her stories and the situations that she spoke of and look at our life and think about the things we've gone through. But you know, one of the things that is very important for us is to ask ourselves in our, in our own hearts is, you know, is there things in my life? What is in my life? What is in my heart? Where am I in this whole life that we live here on this earth in regards to my relationship with God. You see, a lot of times people have their idea of a relationship with God. And, and, they, and if you were to ask them about their relationship with God, you know, you, you'll hear different people will respond and they will say, you know, well, you know, I'm, God and I, we're okay, we're okay, or, 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 or I know who God is and He loves me, but, you know, and those are wonderful things because in this, especially in, in, in you know, we, we, 
we look at our life and we know all about God. We celebrate Easter and Christmas and all the different holidays. We know that God exists. Many, many people know that God exists here, especially in this country. But the question is, 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 you know, it's not a matter of knowing about God. The Bible says that if you want to make heaven your home, that you must be born again. And what is born again? It's giving Jesus all of your heart and all of your life. It's not a, it's an all or nothing deal. It's not a little in, little out, token prayer once in a while. 911 Jesus, when I'm in trouble, then the rest of the time forget about him. You know, so many times we want to ask this question, and the question is this, if today was the day where your heart stopped beating and you died and you stood before God, because each and every one of us is going to stand before God, Will, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? That's the question you have to ask yourself. See, God's going to say one thing to you. He's either going to say, enter ye into the joy of the Lord, or he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And so for a moment, I want you to think, what, what do you feel God would say to you at that time? If, if, if God forbid today was that day, you might say, well, I think he would say, enter ye. But see, nowhere in the Bible does it say just because you think you're going to make heaven your home, you're going to make heaven your home. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. Which prompts me to ask you the next question. What makes you think you're going to heaven? You might have an answer for that too. You might say, well, I'm a good person. Or I do good works. Or my good outweighs my bad. Or you might say, well, uh, Pastor Tom, I go to church on Sundays. I know all about God. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a religious person. My parents told me about God. I, I, I believe that God exists, but my friend, nowhere in the Bible does say any of those things get you into heaven. You might say, but Pastor Tom, I believe that Jesus is God's only son. But my friend, the Bible says the demons believe he's God's only son, and they're not making heaven their home because it's more than what you have in your head. It's what you have in your heart. And people are going to miss God by 11 inches. They know all about God in their head, but they don't know him in their heart. And today... We're talking about a heart issue. And today I want to give you that opportunity. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. This is between you and God. I'm going to ask you to do something. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, Look, you know, I, I need to get my heart right with God. I want to be forgiven. I want to ask God to forgive me of all my sins. You've been running from God instead of to God. You've been going through some things. And you come to the realization that, you know, you, need, you just need God in your life. And if that's you, would you just do me a favor? Do yourself a favor. I'm going to ask you to respond to that by just lifting your hand and saying, will you pray for me, Pastor? I need Jesus in my heart. Will you pray for me? Would you just do that right now? Anyone in this room, I see hands going up. Pray for me, Pastor. More hands going up. Pray for me, Pastor. I need Jesus. I need to be forgiven of my sins. I need to ask God to cleanse me and wash me. I want to be born again. I want to, I want to make heaven my home. And not only when I die, I want, I want God in my life right now to to, to, to forgive me of my sins and help me do this thing called life. Go ahead and put your hands down. Many, many hands. And this is how this happens. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died and rose from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the mouth we confess, but with the heart, we've been talking about the heart a lot today, but with the heart we believe so would you say that with me? Say this with all your heart, everyone all together, encouraging those around you. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead to give me a new life. And I accept you now as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I am a Christian. I am a forgiven. Amen. Let's give Jesus a praise. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Well, listen, right after service, we're going to have a, 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 a prayer team standing right over here. And we have a, is Pastor, where's Pastor Jesse? I can't see. Oh, he's right there. Pastor Jesse, come on up here, Pastor Jesse. Pastor Jesse's going to st be standing right here, right after service. I'm going to encourage you. You know, we're not going to do anything to embarrass you, but I'm going to encourage you right after the service is over. When we dismiss you, I'm going to encourage you to get out of your seat, make your way to the front. Come let uh, Pastor Jesse know, hey, you know what? I prayed that prayer, invited Jesus into my heart. Listen, the Bible doesn't say to go and make converts of all nations. It says go make disciples of all nations. We want to help you grow in the things of God. We want to equip you, amen, in the things of God so that you could be a, 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 
a, a Christian that's not a defeated Christian, but a successful Christian. Amen? A victorious believer. Amen? And so I want to encourage you to come. Let Pastor Jesse know that you prayed that prayer. You invited Jesus in your heart. We also have prayer teams in the front right here available for you. Anything you need you dealing with a sickness anything a, a diagnosis of sickness you need prayer we want to lay hands on you we want to help you get uh get your get your deliverance amen get your healing in amen well praise the lord let's all stand together amen thank you for joining us here at the rock church we would like to extend an invitation for you to come visit one of our live services here at our location we are located at 4027 Trail Creek Road, Riverside, California, 92505. For more information regarding our service time as well as how you can support the Rock Church Riverside, please visit our website at www.rockchurchsr.com. God bless you, and remember, with God, all things are possible.